Hi friends, it's Taylor. Welcome back to my channel where I share my financial journey to debt freedom. This is part five of my living alone on a budget series. And today we're talking about how I save money on groceries through meal planning. Before we get started, I wanna point out that you'll be seeing my meal planning template throughout the video. And this is the new and improved version 2.0. It has the same course setup as the previous version, but both versions will be available on my shop so you can choose which one is best for you. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first way I save money on groceries is by having a budget. I buy my groceries weekly, so I have given myself a budget of $90 a week or about $360 a month. I created this budget based on the monthly average of my historical spending on groceries, and also considering that I don't mind spending more money in order to try new recipes because I love cooking. For those that don't have a place to start, the USDA's website has reports of average food spending plans you can use as a reference, and they are updated and adjusted for inflation every month. You would just go to the most recent month, choose the food plan of your choice. I'm gonna click on low, moderate, and liberal, and then find the row and column that applies to you. For example, I am a 28 year old female, so I am going to look at the age range here, and then my budget of $90 a week falls in between the moderate and liberal plan. I wanna give a quick shout out to Avery from My Money Moves for pointing out this resource. The second way I save money on groceries is by maximizing what's already in the kitchen. Of course, this means I need to keep track of what's in the kitchen. So I'll go through all of my cabinets, the fridge, and the freezer to see what I already have. I also throw out anything expired and mark it out of stock accordingly so that my system stays up to date. After I check the kitchen, I head to Notion and go to the toggle here that says, what can I make with what I have? This is a filtered view of the recipes database where at least one ingredient needed for the recipe is in stock. And the recipes are sorted by which ones have the most ingredients in stock to the least. So we start with the recipes that have 100% ingredients in stock at the top, and then the percentages go down the more that you scroll down the list. Ignore these random recipes here that have 40%. It's glitched out for some reason, and I haven't figured out why. But you'll see that it went from 100% to 92%, 86%, etc. This takes away a lot of decision fatigue from choosing what to make with what's in stock because Notion is already doing the work for you. I will note that the initial buildup of the system takes a bit of work because you have to add all the ingredients needed for the recipe up front, but once you do, your system will maintain itself on its own. The third way that I save money on groceries is by cycle syncing, AKA adjusting my diet based on the phase of my menstrual cycle. If this section does not apply to you, feel free to skip to the next timestamp. Cycle syncing is something I discovered over two years ago, and since then I've built a simple system in Notion to help me track which foods I should eat during each phase, which in turn helps me save money on groceries by only buying what I can actually eat. As you can see, we're in Notion, and this is my cycle syncing database. It only has a few properties, and we'll go through those now. First is the status column, so I can check off which phase is active. Then I have the name of the phase, of course. I also have three relation properties. Two are linked to my groceries database, one showing foods that I can eat during that phase, and the other one shows which ones to avoid. The third one is a relation directly to the recipes database in case there's a specific recipe that will support me in that phase. As you all may notice, I am still building this out because I have a lot of things in the groceries database and the recipes database, but I prioritized marking the ones that are super important for me to have during that phase. And lastly, I have a roll up that calculates the percentage of foods that are good for me to eat in this phase and shows me how many are in stock. I also have a relation here at the end that connects to my workouts database, but I don't really use it that often, so I'm gonna skip over it in this video. Let's work through an example of how I would use this to meal plan. First, I'd open up the phase into a full page, this is just my personal preference because when you're in table view, you have to click into each property in order to see the details. So it's just easier for me to see everything when I open up the full page. Next, I'll review the foods that are good to eat and choose to add them to my shopping list if I wanna buy it. For example, I will add steak, lettuce, and kidney beans 
to my grocery list by marking it as need to buy. Then I'll review the foods that I should avoid, doing almost the reverse process by removing anything that I marked as need to buy. Next to each grocery, I also have the negative reactions on my body that serves as a double reminder not to get this. So for soy milk, for example, it currently says need to buy, but if I'm in the menstrual phase, this is something that would actually upset my stomach. So I'm gonna click into this and give it a status of next time. This is why I prioritize checking the kitchen first because it ensures that the list that I'm looking at as I'm looking at foods that are good and bad for me to eat are accurate when I'm planning to eat during this phase of my cycle. Lastly, I have a section of specific recipes that will support this phase of my cycle. If I open up this recipe in particular, the chicken, wild rice, and veggie bowl, and scroll down to the ingredients, I can see that a good amount of ingredients for this recipe will support my menstrual phase. So this is something I would want to add to my meal plan since this is the phase that I'm in and I wanna plan for that. Speaking of choosing recipes, the fourth way that I save money on groceries is by having a list of food staples. This is my recipes database, and this tab shows me recipes that are marked as either go-to or fave. Go-to meaning recipes that I tend to cook pretty often, and fave meaning my favorite recipes. It also shows how long each recipe will take, as well as how many ingredients are in stock. I love having a list of recipes for low energy days, days when I need to fill up the rest of my meal plan, or when I don't like thinking too much about what to make. So this is another way I reduce decision fatigue during my process. A related part of this is having a list of groceries that I like to keep on hand at all times if I can. And the reason for this is because I'm confident in cooking with these ingredients and I can usually make a ton of different recipes with them. So I tend to prioritize buying these first before getting new ingredients. And here's an example of these two lists working together. I typically have some kind of meat, onions, bell peppers, and potatoes on hand. So if I reference my go-to recipes list on the side, I can make Japanese curry because that is going to include just about all of those ingredients. Japanese curry is also a comfort food for me, so this will be perfect for low energy days. All I have to do is throw everything into a pot, let it cook, and then I end up with a simple and tasty comfort meal. The fifth way I save money on groceries is by taking everything I just talked about and creating a meal plan. On my meal planning dashboard, I have a simple table here that shows which days I don't want to do heavy cooking, aka low energy, and which days I will be cooking and meal prepping. For example, I go into the office on Fridays, but I have motion sickness, so I am always swamped when I get back home and I don't feel like cooking. With me having this information on this table, I can remind myself when creating my meal plan for the week to not schedule any meals that will require a lot of cooking on Fridays. Even better than that, since I plan to cook on Thursday anyways, I can prepare all of Friday's meals the night before so I don't have to worry about it at all. I've already created my meal plan for the week so I'll just show you all the kind of philosophy that I have here. So I'm only gonna have cereal for breakfast on Friday, which is super easy to make. And then my lunch and dinner are already covered by what I cooked on Wednesday and Thursday, which are the days I already planned on cooking based on my table here. Keeping this meal plan at the top of the page makes it for easy reference throughout the week because I don't have to worry about what I'm going to cook or eat. I can just check the calendar and see what I already planned for with the flexibility to move things around if I want to. For the last part of the video, I want to do a compilation of other random smaller tips I have that help me save money, and these are not in any particular order. Tip 1. I prioritize using foods that will expire soon so I can use it before it goes bad. Tip 2. I use a Brita water filter. It costs just under 40 bucks and lasts about two months, and the filter replacements are about $7 each. It's a super affordable way to drink water, you don't take up space in your kitchen with a bunch of plastic, and it's better for the environment. Tip 3. I only buy what I need. I want to mention that the cost column that I have here in the groceries database is the total cost of how much I usually get. For example, I only get one bag of chicken legs, so I put the price of one bag, but for pears, I usually get two, so I put the total cost of two pears. 
This makes the estimated cost in Notion appear at the top and at the bottom of the column as accurate as possible. Tip four, I use food storage containers to reduce spoiling. This is especially important for foods that are always exposed to the air, like cereal, but these airtight containers reduce how frequently I need to buy them. I got these in plastic because I was on a budget back then, but I suggest using glass since it doesn't absorb as much bacteria as plastic. Tip five, I separate my frozen goods into Ziploc bags. Since I live alone, I like to portion out the meats and vegetables based on how much I eat at once. This makes it easier for me to grab and go when I'm ready to cook it later and makes it easier to thaw out because it's not grouped up which reduces the amount of food that gets spoiled from thawing out too much food, refreezing it, and then it gets frostbite or something. Tip six, I keep the kitchen clean throughout the day to reduce stress for when it's time to cook and eat. It also looks nice. And lastly, tip number seven, I get cash back rewards. This video is not sponsored, but I wanted to talk about Fetch. It's an app that allows me to scan receipts and get points back, which I can redeem for real cash. I like Fetch because most of my receipts are digital and with the tap of a button, I can scan all of my receipts across my email as well as my connected Amazon and Walmart accounts. Then Fetch will show me how many rewards points I got from that receipt. As you can see, I have almost 10,000 points, which I could redeem now if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to save up for the $50 gift card. I'll leave a link below with my referral code if you want to try them out and we'll both get a thousand points. That's it for today's video on my meal planning hacks. If you're interested in the meal planning template, it will be linked below on my shop. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.